office cleaners reported the blaze and firefighters were on the scene within minutes as the senior officer, Stacy, was first into the building. We pitched a ladder to the window and I went up. He had about a four, four or five inch slit in his stomach where it had been opened up. And the, the flames were coming out and the slit in his stomach just like a blowtorch. Making a noise like a blowtorch would. We put the fire out with the hose reel, and that's when I got the photographers in and the forensic people in, because it was, it needed to be investigated. These are the official London Fire Brigade photos. As the building was derelict, there was no mains gas supply nearby, which leaves just one other possible source for the gas leak and the fire's fuel, Bailey's body. It's not easy to burn a body. It's about one of the most difficult things there is, to get rid of a body by burning it. The unexplained fire has made the case ripe for labelling as spontaneous human combustion. But I want real answers, and so does Jack Stacy. He suffered a great deal, and I would like to know why. And nobody could tell me why. A mysterious force, or just a dodgy kebab? Can eating the wrong foods put everyone in danger of bursting into flames? To find out if humans really can produce dangerous levels of methane, I asked nutrition expert Yvonne Weston to take me on a whirlwind tour of fart foods. So imagine I was a real bunter and I just consumed all of this food. How much gas do you reckon this would generate in, in, in my gut? It's kind of up to three litres a day, really. So God. you could guess it would be, you know, it would be a complete guess, but we could put it towards the higher end of that. So in terms of gas production... Well, there's all sorts of combinations that we've got here, but mm. beans, for instance... Chickpeas. They're really difficult to break down and digest, and if you're not used to it, that it, it can produce a lot of gas. So these are for experienced, <laughs> experienced bean eaters, bean eaters yeah. only. So if gases are the cause of spontaneous human combustion, what would be the warning signs that somebody is producing too much? Well, you would obviously be very windy, um, yes. but, but bloating as well. But a gut that was really out of kilter um, could potentially produce a lot more. Yeah, it could produce more, and, and depending on the individual, it could be more of the flammable gases as well. But you still need to have a source of ignition to get those gases to explode. And, and I don't think many people have that as their prime concern. They're just concerned about how they look and how they feel. Mm. Spontaneous combustion doesn't, doesn't tend to be a reason people put on their forms for coming to see me, I have to say. But then Yvonne's clients probably don't consume the food I'm about to pollute my body with. Refined carbs with a methane-making topping. Sulphur-rich, stink-stirring asparagus and some indigestible chilli, ripe for a long-winded, festering fermentation. One more wafer-thin mint, Mr. Creosote. This is one happy meal with a difference. And the only prize I get for completing it is a three-litre supersized fart and just maybe a slim chance of spontaneously combusting. So, here we are with my gut crammed full of intestinal gases and with a jar full of 24 hours of my methane production. And you'd think that without an obvious spark or without me sitting on a lighted candle, I'd be safe. Well, think again. Meet explosives expert, Dr. Sidney Olford. This is gunpowder. He's the chemistry teacher every school child would have wanted, but every school would have been too afraid to employ. Firing! He believes in a potential phenomenon that should give my gas-filled body grave cause for concern, the self-lighting fart. And he's going to demonstrate the principle with this highly controlled substance. So this is the stuff. This is the stuff. Well, it's all quite pebbly and innocent looking. It's uh, <laughs> quite difficult to get hold of though, isn't it? It's rather restricted, yes. It's, it's very poisonous and of course when it gets damp, as the gases catch fire spontaneously, it's not the sort of stuff you want in the average kitchen. 
Absolutely not, because when you drop these pebbles into water, the gases that are let off spontaneously ignite on contact with air. Alarmingly enough, Sydney thinks the same gases could form in your gut if you go OTT on egg yolk or other phosphorus-rich foods. So think of this balloon as an eggy stomach. OK. Is that enough? I think so. OK. OK. What I'm going to do now, believe it or not, is put it down on the ground okay. and the two will mix and we'll take half a pace back. OK. Out of respect for the chemistry. There we go. Will, there you know, we go. Listen, yeah. listen, listen. Whoa. Dear, dear. Hey, you, haven't, you haven't dropped one, have you, Sydney? No, no. That's the smell of the phosphine. Ah. And the reason that that hasn't caught fire is because no there's there. no air in there yet. That's right. So here we have a balloon full now of phosphorus hydrides all generated and on contact with air they should burn and ignite. They certainly should. Should uh, we pop it and see what happens? We can do that. I don't need to burn my hand Touch either. Burn. I'll try to go one, two, three, stab. We're here. Whoa! There we are. I temporarily disappeared in a cloud of phosphorus pentoxide. So you could, in actual fact, be lying in your bed at night and sort of break wind after a heavy curry and set yourself alight. I don't want to be rude about curries, but uh, if for any reason you had a, an unusual concentration of phosphorus mm. gases, then you could find yourself in that tiny, tiny, tiny proportion of people who catch fire. It's almost enough to put you off the vindaloo. Now, would you like that happening in your underpants? I don't think so, no. I definitely want my underpants to remain intact, but my friend Cynthia has kindly volunteered hers for TV's first ever phosphoric fart. And it's going to be a big one. We cast Cynthia for the job because being made of rubber means, as well as being flammable, we can hollow her out and fill her with the two crucial gas ingredients we need for major flames. Cynthia has many attractive features, but one thing she doesn't have is a gut full of uh, noxious gases, and that's what we're going to give her, isn't it? Not particularly noxious, but inflammable, certainly. As well as donating my methane, Sydney's going to top her up with a little bit of butane. Result? A highly combustible mix. So I think of me as a walking incendiary bomb. I know, I can smell your walking incendiary bombs from here. <laughs> Just like with the balloon, we're going to add water to calcium phosphide to generate flammable phosphorus hydride fart gas that Sydney thinks could be formed in your gut after eating phosphorus-filled foods. Baked beans, double egg and chips. That would do it, wouldn't it, Sydney? I think so. And for when she sparks one up, we've also crammed her full of flammable gases. All that's needed is a drop of water, and then Cynthia's in charge. I'll just pour it down her uh, aim for the... Uh, okay. ..for the ombril. Ah, but struth! Hey! Ah. <laughs> hey! Oh, I felt that. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Bingo, we have ignition. The fatal phosphonic fart. Yes, it looks... It's starting to look very fatal, isn't it? You saw it here first. Like any real-life fart, after the humorous release, there's a sting in the tail. Being made of rubber, Cynthia's fumes could take us all down with her. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. Right, I've seen people do this in zombie movies. Drag, um, drag it this way yeah, so it, the wood doesn't yeah. catch fire. We've left it a little bit late. Oh, well done. Do you realise that uh, another place, another time, we both have got a medal for that? Well, there we are. This is uh, my first victim of spontaneous human combustion. So, gases in the human body can be extremely flammable. Not only that, but we've also got a new source of ignition, too. The fatal phosphonic fart. But what I still don't know is why bits of the victim's body still remain and why the blaze never spreads to the room they're found in.